Welcome back, Nerd Squad. My name is Roy Destroya, and this is Top 10 Nerd. We all know heroes are great and all. I mean, yeah, yeah, save the day, get the girl, whatever, man. At the end of the day, it starts to run a little stale. What I'm into is the dark and scheming villains, because let's face it, the dark side is more fun. So let's take a look at the Top 10 Arrowverse villains. In the number 10 spot is Killer Frost. Danielle Panabaker opens this list up as Killer Frost, mostly because she wasn't entirely a villain, but dancing along the cusp of good and evil, we love her either way. When Caitlyn Snow's powers began to corrupt her, she was determined to fight her Killer Frost side. And though she was successful many times to merge the two personas, when she got taken over by the dark side, we got to see a new and, quite frankly, improved Caitlyn. Would have liked to see the show allow her to be a villain a bit more, but at least we have the comics for our villainous Frost cravings. Next, at number 9, we have King Shark. The Flash absolutely has to get some credit for taking such an unconventional TV villain that could have made their show a Sharknado crap fest and actually executing it quite well. David Hayter's half man, half shark hybrid wasn't around for a long time, but left audiences stunned with how they actually didn't feel like he was an intrusion at all. Rather, he added a little something fishy and special to the couple episodes he appeared in. It's a new era for monstrous animal hybrids, guys. Coming in at number 8 is Black Siren. The Laurel Lance of Earth 2 is not the angelic black canary, but the evil black siren instead, and we gotta say, villainy is a much better look on her. Not only is Katie Cassidy's character much more rough around the edges, and much more lively this time around, but she also finally gets an organic sonic scream. Yet despite obviously relishing in her new darkness, Laurel still has grants of humanity left in her that further complicate her character, and I am a sucker for complexity. In the number 7 spot is Lillian Luther. Mama Luther in the house. If you think you can mess with little Lex Luther, guess again, because this mom is vicious. Yes, I mean she's a real monster to her adopted daughter because pff, she's not a real Luther. But you gotta give the lady credit for going to such extremes because an alien was mean to her son one time. So the character may not be the most multi-dimensional, but she was fun to watch and Brenda Strong obviously had a lot of fun playing her. And now we know where little Lex gets it from. Up in number 6 we got Damien Dark. Neil McDonald brings us the supernatural Damien Dark, the man who killed Black Canary. This actually made him the first antagonist to directly kill a member of Team Team Arrow, something we will always remember him for. The supernatural aspect was also refreshing amongst the physicality, although Arrow as a show doesn't quite handle the supernatural as well as they do the archery, kicking, punching stuff. So Damien found a better niche when he was moved over to Legends of Tomorrow. Coming in at number 5 is Prometheus. There's nothing scarier than looking in the mirror and seeing your past mistakes all just staring you in the face. Unless you're me, then staring in the mirror is scary regardless of any context. Josh Segarra's Prometheus confronted Ollie with the worst parts of his life and there's nothing that makes a villain better than that. He doesn't top the list because he was almost too perfect, with all his preparedness and always being a step ahead. But more important than being believable in a world of bow-wielding vigilantes is being a fun and threatening villain. Next up at number 4 we have Gorilla Grodd. A couple years ago there's no way a giant gorilla would make the top 5 of best villains on a TV show. Maybe silliest or campiest, yes. However, Grodd, voiced by David Sobolov, was given a story that toned down the ridiculousness of a telepathic monster Gorilla. He also was produced by some of the most impressive special effects on the show, which is extremely important when you're introducing something this far out. Take notes, snakes on a plane, still having nightmares over your CGI. Up next to number 3 is Deathstroke. Deathstroke is hugely popular in the comics, so audiences were awaiting his TV appearance eagerly, despite worries that the show's portrayal may not live up to the expectations. However, Manu Bennett slayed Wilson more than delivered. The friendship that was formed by Slade and Oliver was the key to making this villain more more than an evil mastermind or a megalomaniac baddie. He's got more emotional depth than he ever did in the comic, and this just makes him seem more menacing and more human at the same time. In the number 2 spot we got Dark Archer. John Barrowman's Malcolm Merlin was the first long term villain of Arrow, and so he had a lot riding on his shoulders. And now he has set the bar high for all future Arrow villains, becoming a very tough act to follow. I always do love a good story with familial ties. I feel like it deepens any conflict and forces characters to really look at their loyalty. But at the end of the day, he was the master of manipulation, the king of avoiding consequences, and hands down the best villain that Arrow has seen. And finally, in the number one spot, we have Reverse Flash. Eobard Thawne, portrayed by Matt Lecher, is the epitome of how all villains should be created. He is deeply constructed so that he's not just nefarious, but also sympathetic.
dramatic. It's obvious that a lot of time went into his character development and complexity. He's got a huge connection to main character Barry Allen, posing as his mentor, and he works that yellow much better than any other superhero character has. Hello, wizard. So he is the number one thing that The Flash has ever gotten right. And sadly, they haven't quite been able to recreate such a captivating villain or storyline surrounding their villains. Better luck in season 5, maybe. So those were the top 10 Arrowverse villains. Let me know in the comment section down below which villain would you love to see added to the Arrowverse. My name is Rory Destroya, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another nerdy list.